What is going on guys? Today's video is on the book Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl was a professor of neurology and psychiatry, and this is probably one of the most powerful books I've ever read. The book chronicles Viktor Frankl's experiences as an Auschwitz concentration camp inmate during World War II. And during his time in camp, he's tortured, he's beaten, he's worked to the brink of death, not given enough food or proper clothing or shoes during freezing temperatures. He's subjected to vermin, frostbitten toes, and edema. He paints a truly horrific existence of his day-to-day -day camp life. Daily, people drop dead all around him from disease and starvation and are executed for no reason at all. His mother, father, brother, and wife were all killed in the camps. You know, with all this in mind, how could he find life worth preserving? So let's jump into the first main takeaway from the book, and that is you have to find meaning in suffering and in your life. As Nietzsche says, he who has a why to live for can bear almost anyhow. You know, even though Frankl was living in extremely difficult circumstances and had been stripped of almost all his humanity, he noticed something. His ability to find meaning in even the direst of circumstances helped him to survive. He noticed two types of prisoners, those that had lost faith, meaning, and hope in the future, and those that didn't. The ones that looked at life as a challenge to be overcome the ones who had a why to live were more likely to survive. He discovered that in life, you can either make a victory of your experiences or you can ignore the challenge and simply fade away. So you have to ask yourself, do you have a strong why in your life? A why strong enough to get you through any challenge? You know, what are you living for? What is your purpose? And I challenge you to sit back and reflect on that and think about that deeply. In Victor's case, he thought of future lectures that he would be giving based on his experiences. In doing so, his current life experiences became more objective. He looked at them as learning events, and he believed, and I quote, in some way, suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds meaning. So to him, suffering became a task that he didn't turn his back on. He embraced it and realized the hidden opportunities for achievement. He had a strong why. So do you look for the why behind a tough situation, or do you just complain about it? So many of us suffer from existential frustration. In our existence, we're bored and without meaning we become frustrated with life. This can cause an array of issues like depression, anxiety, and so on. So Viktor Frankl's take on it was, you have to find meaning in your life. You have to find a purpose, something bigger than yourself. And you know, searching for your meaning can bring inner tension and that's just natural and necessary. You know, struggling to achieve a goal is normal and natural. So really, I challenge you again, sit back, think about what's your purpose? What is your meaning in life? Really take the time to reflect on it. All right, the second big takeaway from this book is that you have a choice. You always have a choice. Between stimulus and response, there's a gap. And in that gap is the ability to choose how you respond to any given situation. There'll always be external forces acting upon you that you can't control, such as the traffic, weather, and so on. What you can control are those internal forces, your response. Never forget that you have the freedom to choose your reaction. It doesn't matter what life throws your way. What matters is how you respond to the situation. It's your attitude towards your existence that makes all the difference. And in the words of Viktor Frankl, everything can be taken from a man but one thing. The last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. You and you alone decide what your life will be in the next moment. Man is capable of changing the world and can change himself for the better. You have the freedom to change at any instant. Even in a concentration camp where you have no freedom at all, you can behave like a swine or a saint. Which one depends on decisions, not on conditions? So uh, let's look at an example from the book. A man's wife died and he was depressed, so the doctor asked him, what if it was your wife that died? She would suffer, no? He says, oh yes, she would. The doctor says, okay, then you are the one to take on the suffering instead of her. Isn't that what you would prefer? The man says, yes, of course. So that's an interesting way to look at the suffering. Did the situation change? No. The only thing that changed was the old man's attitude towards the situation. That's a great example of someone finding meaning in suffering by changing how they respond to the circumstance. It's not about your situation, it's about your attitude towards your circumstances. When we are no longer able to change a situation, 
we are challenged to change ourselves. And there are many more lessons in the book, so I highly recommend you get a copy and you read it. I think it's available online, or you can read my more in-depth summary on my blog. I'll post a link down below. But uh, one more lesson here. Happiness and success cannot be pursued. And I'll quote Viktor Frankl here. Don't aim at success. The more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you're going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue. And it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen and the same holds for success. You have to let it happen by not caring about it. I want you to listen to what your conscious commands you to do and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. Then you will live to see that in the long run, in the long run I say, success will follow you precisely because you had forgotten to think about it. So again, just a couple big takeaways from the book. Check it out.